Hey guys, this is Old Man Stompy and welcome back to Let's Play Ghost Trick. On the last episode, we saved this red-haired girl from being shotgunned to death by a professional assassin. We rolled him up like a big steel katamari. But more importantly, we picked up this, our handy-dandy notebook. So let's check it out. All right then, I wish you good luck. Thanks, Lampy. Trick time! We're exactly where we left off when we returned to the present after saving the girl in this claw. But now we have this notebook. This is our general function in this game. It tells us everything we need to know about all, about all the people we've met so far. Uh, it doesn't really tell you anything you won't have seen in the main plot line. It's more or less just a summary. For example, here's uh, Raymond Q. Lampington. He calls himself Ray. I don't know who he really is. He taught me the secrets of the powers of the dead. Again, we didn't really learn anything here. We've also got this phone book. It shows us the phone that we saw the Hitman answer a call on at the end of uh, uh, earlier on in Chapter 1. Again, not too much here. The place where I lost my life, it appears to be junker on the outskirts of town, etc, etc. However, this is also where our save function is. Uh, so this is pretty important, obviously. I never use this myself. I only save in the automatic prompts in between chapters, and use sleep mode from on my DS the rest of the way there. I never took the game out, it was just that good. So let's uh, skip the saving for now, go back to the game. So our goal, since we've been told that red-headed girl is the key, is to get down there. So let's see what we can do. We can shimmy with the bike. Let's see what that does. And we shimmy down the power lines. Again, this is just part of the standard create a path mechanism that our ghost tricks are used for. We have a thought bubble to look at. It's our thoughts, but it doesn't really tell us anything other than the fact that we have to get down there next to the girl. Obviously, the pedaling doesn't do anything because the bike isn't on the ground. But we can open this umbrella, so let's do that. And there we go, we're right next to the girl. And let's see what she has to say. What in the world just happened? The crane moved all by itself and that big iron ball fell all by itself. So it was raining by itself and then an umbrella came down all by itself. Oh my goodness! Don't tell me I have psychokinetic powers! So, she's supposed to sound pretty loopy saying this, but honestly, considering we're a disembodied ghost possessing things and moving them around, she's really not too far from the truth. But the important thing is, now we've got her attention, sort of. At least we get to hang out with her. You'll notice we do not have the ability to ghost Right now, oftentimes, when you're, when you're in an object and you're moving around, not of your own volition, it's usually a sign that you have to pay attention to the next thing you have to ghost into, but that is not the case here. Just generally, a tip for gameplay is to watch out for the little ghost button on the lower left-hand corner of the screen as a sign that something you're supposed to be doing. And hello? I mean, this is a junkyard, so there are likely to be cats, but a black cat? Maybe it's not her day. Man, get off my suit. He's got a thing tied around his neck. Might belong to somebody. Could it be my pet? Be interesting. Explain why he jumped on me. Alright, let's hear what she has to say. Seriously, what in the world has happened? Huh. She sees something. It's a note! Let's check it out. So let's move from the umbrella. These are just a bunch of other objects that we used earlier. So let's examine the note. this note? Maybe I should give it a read. So you don't remember writing it, huh? Stop distracting me, Lampy. No, I don't remember writing it, but even more importantly... And there's the phone call. Remember, in this timeline, the girl didn't die, so the phone call, instead of going to the assassin, comes here. There's nobody to pick it up, except us. So let's see what happens. And... Trick time! We didn't even get through that optionally. Hmm, I didn't get a chance to read that note. Not to interrupt your train of thought, but I wonder if you've realized where this telephone call is coming from. Huh, how would I know that? Think back. Before you helped her avert her fate, didn't a telephone call come in around this time too? Oh yeah. And here's the man with the golden gun, picking up the phone, just in case you forgot, from about 10 minutes ago. That telephone call! Exactly, in other words, at this very moment on the other end of that telephone line is the clipper who ordered your murder. What? Awfully early for us to be finding out about that. It's only chapter one. I recommend you possess the telephone. Once you've done that, I'll tell you about another one of your ghost tricks. Oh man, all kinds of great powers in this chapter. Trick time! Let's check out the phone. It's the only place we can go. Still can't examine the note again. And then I saw him. Right there on the other end of the line, I saw the face of the man who ordered me dead. Huh. Check out the eyebrows on that guy. 
If in trying, if you were wondering who killed you, if you had your money on Grandpa Smurf, then I guess you won. Is it done? Speak up, man. Did you get her? Okay. Who is this? Hmm, yes, a thousand pardons, my dear lady. I must have dialed the wrong number. <laughs> and he hangs up. Oh man, what a jerk. Trace complete. What does this mean? Check out that red line on the telephone. So that's him, huh? The man who stole my life. That's right, so what do you think? Would you like to go see him? You better believe I would. Then you would do well to listen to me. We ghosts exist by possessing inanimate objects. However, there is one way we can move from place to place over great distances. And that would be... The dead can jump from point A to point B by moving over phone lines. Say what? I've done all I can to help you. You'll have to do the rest yourself. You're not coming with me? I'm afraid not. My powers have grown weak. I've already used up most of my remaining strength just to get here tonight. But I had to come to ask your help. This, by the way, explains uh, the answer to a question a friend of mine asked after the previous chapter, which is why Ray doesn't help you come back to life. And the answer is he's out of power. Simple enough. My help. Many mysterious things will happen in this town tonight. I'm trusting you to get to the bottom of them and find out the truth. He is still awfully knowledgeable and doesn't really explain how he learned so much when the spirits are only supposed to have until sunrise, but I'm sure that'll never be relevant to the plot at all. You're the only one who can do it. I want you to use your powers of the dead to find this truth. Huh. I'm grateful to you for everything you've done, but I can't promise I'll help. Tomorrow morning I cease to exist, that doesn't give me a whole lot of time. I need to pursue my own mystery and find the truth about myself. That's reasonable. Huh? If you succeed in doing that, you'll have done what I asked anyway. The two are one and the same. One and the same? Hmm. This desk lamp knows a whole lot more than he's telling me. Really? How many times have I heard that? Now then, from that call a moment ago, you now have the culprit's telephone number. The rest is all up to you. So as you can see, we have this phone wheel we can look at. Originally we only had the junkyard, the phone we're, at, we're in right now, and now we have this number, which apparently leads to the village of the Smurfs. You'll notice, uh, whatever foreign country these people are supposed to represent, everybody's got blue skin, which is pretty fantastic. So, let's just go with Smurf Village. La, 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 la. Anyway. So this concludes chapter one, a little bit of narration. One, any minute now. And so the story of the search for myself begins, a story that will last one night only. Tomorrow morning I cease to exist, and I'm surprisingly okay with this fact. I have to find the answers before the sun comes up. Why was I killed, and what exactly is going to happen in this town tonight? And we will find out on the next episode of Ghost Trick. I'm going to stop this here and maybe record another one, uh, just so I don't have to flail about for a good place to save in Chapter 2 once I run up against the 15 minute time limit. So let's stop it here.